Well, this is kind of an advanced topic. Um, I'm doing this to show you that uh, with a model view controller, you really have a lot of options. And one option is to change the view engine. Um, and so I'm going to use Silverlight here as the view engine. Um, the model uh, and controllers will still be managed as uh, we saw before. But um, instead of calling ASPX pages, we're going to be working with Silverlight. Now, one of the things that makes this somewhat um, advanced is the fact that you kind of have to understand Silverlight uh, to make sense of this. So if Silver Silverlight is new to you, um, I'll try my best to be clear, but, uh, but it, may, uh, it may go beyond you. But uh, I encourage you to get up to speed on Silverlight. I have some tutorials out there. If, uh, if you want to use those, be, feel free to do so. Anyway, let's go ahead um, and get started here. Um, a Silverlight application is a self-contained uh, program running on the client, but hosted by, um, by a browser. So here we see a hypothetical Silverlight application, and this is supposed to be the, uh, the display of the browser page, the ASP.NET web page. Um, and um, when when we start this program running, um, this Silverlight application uh, is loaded into the browser. And what happens is that um, I have programmed within the Silverlight application a uh, page loaded event, which occurs as the page or the Silverlight application is being loaded. And what I do inside this event is I go ahead and create a new web client. I'm calling it MVC. A web client is simply um, a, a, a class that allows um, um, the object that's instantiated from that class to uh, perform web-oriented uh, operations. And one of the things about um, uh, Silverlight is that all of the activity that takes place with Silverlight as far as um, uh, networking it's all asynchronous. Um, it's not a synchronous process. So what I'm doing in the next statement is I am adding um, um, a handler. Um, I don't know if you've worked with handlers before, but but I'm adding a handler called Open Read Completed, which is um, uh, addressed by this particular uh, code here. That that code is further on down in my application. Um, and so what basically what this says is it says um, when when this uh, operation this next operation this this uh, synchronous asynchronous read when it's completed um, it's going to come back to this routine and um, so what it's going to do is it's going to go ahead and call the open read async um, it's going to be totally on its own. Uh, my Silverlight application is kind of there, sitting there, twiddling, twiddling its thumbs. Um, and then when um, the uh, result is returned, then we go, go ahead and call this procedure. Now, notice that when I start this process, this open read async, I'm actually going to a um, MVC controller. It's my category controller and going to the list um, action. So uh, that's where we're going to our model. So we, we need some data. Um, we go to our model, and our model is responsible for producing the result. Um, what that looks like, and this is again one of our, one of our um, action methods inside our controllers. Uh, this is the list action. And what it does is it uh, goes ahead and creates a new Northwind data context. I went ahead and put the actual link query right in here. So it, it does a, a query uh, from C and categories, select uh, a set of uh, category ID and category name. So that's what it's retrieving, a list of category IDs and category names. It's storing that in cats, and it's returning um, it's returning um, a JavaScript object notation equivalent of this collection of uh, category ID and name. Um, that is basically a, um, a format, an XML format that uh, is uh, is passed back uh, to the re the return, which is the open read completed uh, event. Then, so we come back here and. Um, it uh, comes in here. I, I go ahead and 
I do something called a data contract uh, JSON serializer, which basically takes that XML string that was returned by the controller and uh, deserializes that or converts that into um, a list of categories. So, so what I've done there is I've taken a set of categories from my query. I've put it into the uh, JavaScript object notation, sent it back here, and then un JavaScript object notationized it. Okay, um, and and so um, that's basically what happens in this this and these three statements right here. My um, Silverlight application has a control called uh, a category list, and the category listing um, uh, data context is set equal to cats, which is this series of category uh, things which contain the category ID and the category name. So in this when this particular data binding finishes, we end up with a page that looks like this. Again, this is now my web page. Um, this is my, uh, my Silverlight application hosted inside the web page. And this is a list of categories which have been uh, retrieved from um, my, my model. Okay, I should add um, this this idea of of using Silverlight for the view uh, in this way was suggested by a, a Silverlight expert at Microsoft, uh, Tim Here or Hare. I sorry, Tim, if I mispronounced your last name, it's H E U E R uh, Hewer. Um, I, I just I just don't know quite how to pronounce Tim's name. Tim is unbelievably competent in the area of Silverlight, um, and he was trying to figure out how he could introduce Silverlight in the context of MVC, and this is what he came up with. Okay, now so the user now sees this on the screen. Okay, and now the user clicks on something like like convections or dairy products, and what that does is that causes a special Silverlight uh, handler to execute. And that's the selection changed event. And basically, we now go through um, the same process again. We go ahead and um, um, we get the, the category that was selected in here. Um, we um, create a new web client. And again, we register um, a routine that we want to execute when the asynchronous call is completed. Um, we go ahead and, and define our call to our um, uh, product action of our category controller. And notice we need to send it a product name, uh, excuse me, a product ID. And we, we, we don't know the product ID when I wrote the code. But we do get the product ID from, from this uh, selected item. So example, dairy products. This would be a dairy product object. And I get the dairy product project's category ID. And I convert that to a string and go ahead and insert it inside this placeholder. So this ends up being a call to our uh, category controller, the products action, and passes it the actual uh, category ID. And then we go ahead and open uh, an asynchronous read operation, which again passes us out to our uh, products controller. We've passed the ID in there. We grab the product that matches that. So we find the match in the where clause. Uh, we get the result back. Um, so we get um, all the uh, products that match that particular category, like all the dairy products. And again, we use the JavaScript object notation to serialize that and send it back to our returning routine, which is this guy. We go through the process of uh, deserializing it, which is happening right here. And then we go ahead and link it to a product list. And the net result is this product list. Um, we have one more um, uh, selection changed event when I select on a product, and that gets the details of the product. But I'll show you that in the running application. So that's kind of an overview of what's happening in this thing. Again, if you're not really familiar with Silverlight, this is probably really confusing. Uh, but if you're familiar with Silverlight, you can sort of see how this thing is working. So I'm going to go ahead and terminate this, uh, this video, and then I'll bring one up with the actual code, and we'll play with it a little bit.